Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? It seems like these days almost everyone has a smartphone, but with the pace of technological progress slowing down, some people are wondering if we haven't reached so-called peak smartphone. But just what does that term mean and what are the ramifications anyway? Smartphones are a really, really interesting technology segment. You know, we've been surrounded by computers for so long and computers like desktops, laptops have had a major impact on humans on planet Earth in general. But I can't think of another piece of modern technology, you know, from say maybe the past 40 years that's had a larger impact on our daily lives and even the way we think than smartphones. They're, they're much more intimate devices for us than laptops or desktops ever could be. We carry them with us everywhere. We trust them to our de deepest, darkest secrets, containing all the information that we need as part of our daily lives. And so it makes a lot of sense that that's a, a piece of technology that people pay a lot of attention to and, and hold a lot of stock in. So when we've started to see sales of smartphones level off, it's gotten some people worried. And at the same time, at least for me, I find it really interesting how long we've had smartphones for, but how relatively short of a period of time that is given the grand scheme of things. In terms of what I would call kind of the modern smartphone era, uh, generally going back about 10 years, since about 2007, uh, when the original iPhone launched. The iPhone was a major kind of landmark when it came to personal communications. There have been plenty of devices before it. Uh, I was actually a BlackBerry user for several years prior to the iPhone launching. And in fact, I was such a diehard BlackBerry user, I kept it even after the iPhone came out. It took me a couple of years to finally switch camps. But really, the iPhone marked a new way that we interacted with devices and the, the power that they held. Smartphones prior to that did a lot of stuff, but it was really all centered on communication, right? You look at what the classic BlackBerry did. It was phone calls, it was text messages, it was email. Those were the primary functions. The web browser was crap, the music player was crap, the web, the, the camera was crap. It didn't really have much of anything in terms of applications you could get on there. Pretty much, you know, there was no app store. It was, if it wasn't built into the phone, you were, you know, kind of on your own unless you were a real power user. The iPhone really signaled that this is the computer for every person to carry with them. This is the new way that technology moves forward. And obviously after iPhone came out and Android started to get big, and I'm not trying to downplay how important Android has been in terms of society either, but it's, it's really sparked a major, a major change and sales of course just went nuts. Uh, year over year sales since, you know, the, the original iPhone came out and it became, it signaled that, you know, smartphones were a consumer device and not just something, you know, for, for business people to carry around with them. Well, sales just went nuts. But what's interesting is in the last couple of years, sales have actually started to level off. They haven't declined and they're not perfectly flat. They're still climbing but they're only climbing a few percentage points every year. It's not the gangbuster growth like we've seen before. So clearly, at least in a number of markets, everyone who wants to have a smartphone has already bought a smartphone. And in those markets, what we're looking at is replacements. You know, when, when companies say, oh, we sold 20 million phones this quarter or 50 million phones or whatever, you know, it's clear that those numbers largely reflect 
people simply buying that new one to replace an old smartphone that they had. I mean, I've had one, two, I'm on my third model of iPhone. Um, I started with a 3GS, then got a 4S, and then I got a 6. And that's not, you know, my complete list of smartphones that I've ever owned either. That's just iPhones. And because that pace of progress has changed with smartphones so rapidly, people really got used to every year there being these just incredible new features that just blew away what came before, people got used to upgrading pretty quickly. The industry, at least here in the United States, for smartphone or for you know cell carriers, when they would sell smartphones, it would typically be a two-year contract. Um, I'm sure this is the same way in some other countries. Some uh, countries otherwise also may have just done it a completely different way. And I'm not 100% up to speed on how all the different countries handled this, but at least here in the U.S. It was typically you'd sign a contract where you'd buy service from your cell carrier for X amount of money per month for two years. And as part of that, they'd either give you a phone worth a certain amount of money or you'd pay a smaller amount of money for that phone. They basically subsidized most, if not all, the cost of the phone. And when people were on two-year contracts, that was really attractive because the average price that you'd pay out of pocket every two years to get a new device was 200 bucks. 200 bucks for some people is a lot of money, but it's still a number that most people were able to swallow. And it was easier for them to just kind of amortize it out over the months and pay an extra, you know, 10, 15 bucks towards, you know, the, the phone as part of their monthly service costs. They never actually see what that number was. But we that's one thing that really drove, I think, smartphone growth was you'd have people who every two years would be like, hey, this new thing came out. Oh, my contract is about up. Well, what the heck? It's 200 bucks. I'll go buy a new phone. Well, not too long ago, the carriers in the U.S. decided they didn't want to subsidize the cost of the phones anymore. And so they came up with a whole bunch of different ways of doing it. But generally, you're either paying per month as part of like an installment plan, or you're just buying the phone outright out of pocket. And it really woke people up to how much the devices actually cost. They, they always thought, well, a smartphone's 200 bucks. No, that smartphone is, you know, if you're buying something like an iPhone or a higher end Android phone, that phone is typically somewhere between 600 and 700 bucks. You just never saw most of that cost because it got subsidized. And so I think that's one of the contributing factors as to why we've seen smartphone sales kind of level off is that people, I think, are keeping their devices longer because it represents a larger out-of-pocket cost for them, or at least a larger perceived out-of-pocket cost for them when they do have to go out and buy a replacement phone. This has, of course, actually changed the buying habits for people and opened up new avenues for smartphone manufacturers as well. And that it feels like we've had this major stratification happen in the market. It used to be that all of the phones that you could get were premium phones. They were, they were expensive, they were high end. They all went for that 600 to $700 mark. But since we've seen people having to pay out of pocket for their phones and uh, this perceived reluctance to do so. They'll only do it if their phone is totally old or totally trashed or whatever, will they finally go out and buy a new one. There's been a major opportunity for manufacturers to offer lower cost handsets with still decent specs. So what it feels to me is that we've now got two markets but they're very different from each other. You've got the high-end premium market, and now you've got this lower-end market. And that lower-end market seems to try to kind of point towards that $200 to $300 price point, whereas that premium market is anywhere from $600 plus. I mean, you look at some of the really high-end phones, like a top-spec iPhone 7 Plus, it's like 850 bucks or more. 
that's a lot of money for a device that you're carrying around with you that you could potentially trash at any moment just, you know, by dropping it the wrong way or something like that. So we've seen this major opportunity for manufacturers to offer less expensive phones, but the funny thing is by no means are these phones actually crap? I mean, some of them are, but you look at some of the devices that say Samsung has put out that are less expensive. And then you even look at some of the higher end spec wise phones at their price points, like the OnePlus series, they're actually a really, really good value. And so in some ways it seems like there's been this additional expansion in the smartphone market. Not necessarily so much in markets where we've seen churn, you know, we've seen people who already have a phone and they just buy a replacement one. But where that lower end, lower priced market I think really helps is in countries that otherwise couldn't afford smartphones. Uh, China was a big one, although China's market for smartphones is already even starting to see some slowness coming to its growth. There, you know, it, it, we're kind of reaching that point, at least for a while, where everybody who wants a phone already has one. They're saying India is another big market potentially, where a lot of people have phones. I mean, my understanding is that tons and tons, the vast majority of people in India have a phone of some sort, but they're not necessarily smartphones. And so I think this less expensive market is, you know, the, for phones, the, the less expensive versions are really going to help in markets like that. There's also this interesting third market that's cropped up really only in the last couple of years. And there's a very good reason for it. This third market is used phones or refurbished phones or whatever you want to call it. Basically not the latest and greatest models and not necessarily brand new that no one has ever owned. Um, there are plenty of companies that offer to buy back your old smartphone. You know, if you upgrade to a new one, maybe yours is a couple of years old. It still works. It's still fine. You just want something new and fresh. They'll buy it back from you for, you know, 100, 200 bucks, something like that. There's a growing market for used and refurbished smartphones. And I think the reason for that is one, that price sensitivity thing where, you know, maybe you, you trash your phone, you don't really want to or can't afford to pay full price for a brand new one. You were fine with what you had, you just want another one. So maybe you go out and buy another one in the same model. But also it gives people who can't afford a high-end phone an opportunity to get a high-end phone. It may not be the latest and greatest high-end phone, but it's still a really solid one. So here's a great example that's kind of real life. I had some problems with my iPhone 6 lately, and iPhone versus Android will be a topic for a different podcast. But while I waited to figure out what I wanted to do about it and get you know, a, a Genius Bar appointment set up to get it in for service and all that, I used a spare phone and I have a Galaxy S6. And I always keep a spare phone just because of how useful it is. I didn't really want to spend the money on a brand new phone to just keep on the shelf. So I kind of did my research and realized, you know, maybe a one or two year old Android phone would be a decent deal. And it turns out it was. A Galaxy S6 is about the same vintage as my iPhone 6. Very comparable specs and a very solid phone in its own right. But you can pick up an S6 for about 300 bucks used. That represents a really, really good value. I mean, for 300 bucks, that's a killer deal. If you want a phone that size with those capabilities, that sort of thing and are okay with buying something used. So the used market really represents this additional frontier for smartphones. But I think another reason why people are willing to buy used is simply because there's not that huge of a difference between a phone that's two years old and what's being sold right now. 
The latest advancements that we've really been seeing have been display technology. And that's just in terms of maybe better brightness or more vibrant colors, that sort of thing. And then also camera quality. Camera quality does seem to continue to improve. And of course, performance improves, you know, every year, but it doesn't really matter quite so much anymore. I mean, yeah, my iPhone 6 is at this point almost like three years old, but I don't really have any complaints about its performance. It's as fast as I need it to be. And I don't have any complaints about its display. I mean, the display still looks good to me. Would I like a better camera? Well, yeah, but you know, it's kind of photography and stuff. It's kind of a big part of my life, as you can tell. So I'll take a better camera whenever I can, but it's not worth it for me to go and drop 700 something bucks on a brand new iPhone 7 when it's really not that much of a net gain. And so I think that's really kind of the crux to this whole stagnation in smartphones is the technology isn't amazing. It isn't whiz bang. We don't get that every year. The new phones are blowing your mind kind of a thing like we used to. And where that goes from here, well, I don't know. Technology, I think, really kind of goes through these types of cycles where you see that rapid advancement in a short period of time and then things slow down and they just kind of become normal and the market stabilizes, you know? We've been seeing that with PCs for quite a few years now where people who aren't buying new PCs as frequently as they used to just because, well, there's really nothing wrong with their old one. The pace of progress just isn't as fast anymore. So what do companies do? Well, it's time to turn to the next better thing. And I think that's why things like tablets have started to, uh, to you know, be a thing. And of course now they're starting to stagnate too, but also wearables, wearable technology um, is trying to take off. It's finding some, uh, some troubles with that. But I think the next frontier for smartphones isn't necessarily smartphones in their current form factor. I think it's simply going to be, well, a different piece of technology, something to replace them. Just like how smartphones replaced, you know, feature phones or dumb cell phones and PDAs, well, we'll end up with something else that'll eventually replace smartphones. The question is, when? So of course, I'm curious as to your thoughts. Uh, how long have you had a smartphone? Are you happy with yours? How frequently do you upgrade? Are you getting a new phone every year or two because you want the latest and greatest? Or are you like me rocking a phone that's three years old and still finding it suitable for daily use? So be sure to shout out your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.